Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU makes a push towards a new voting system Britain rejects call to align with European voting days European Union set to dictate pay and perks for listed companies plus EU kleptocrats sanction legalised theft from depositors' savings. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. This article looks at changes to the mechanism by which European parliamentary parties are proposed. The European Commission itself recommended that parties seeking seats in Parliament identify a candidate during the campaign, just as voters in national elections know the party's nominees for President or Prime Minister. Whilst this creates the illusion of a deeper level of democracy, I still find myself having to highlight the fact that the EU Commission is an appointment of 27 seats who are unelected for those roles and cannot be removed by the people. It is this body of 27 that writes all the directives and legislation. And so this is a diktat run by 27 elites and not a democracy. I fail to see why the public at large would want such a system. Here in the UK we have a far from perfect system one that is covertly lobbied and in which MPs are whipped into abeyance. However, it was significantly more democratic than the EU and deeply more representative of the people of Britain. Well, at least until its powers were subverted by the succession of EU treaties. Big up to Ted Heath for that one. Word. Britain has rejected calls from Europe to align its voting days with those of the EU. The EU Commission recommended a single voting day in furtherance to its integration objectives in the hope that it would boost voter turnout. Perhaps if the EU were more transparent about its objectives and had not tried to bring about a federal supernation under the guise of a complex economic trading agreement, perhaps if the EU had openly presented its intention, identified the benefits, understood that such a move cannot and should not be undertaken without the express consent of the people, then perhaps, as an informed people, understanding what was trying to be achieved, they might have voted in favour. Having draped itself in sheep's clothing and tried to blend in with the flock, the Euro Bureau kleptocrats suddenly start knocking on the door saying, let us come in. <laughs> Little wonder the people say, not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. After reaching an agreement last week to cap bankers' bonuses, the European Union plans to rein in the salaries of managers and board members of all stock exchange listed companies across the EU bloc. The European Commission will present by the end of this year a comprehensive package of measures not only to curb the salaries, bonuses and severance pay, but also to introduce more transparency about the remunerations of top executives. My question for our learned Stalinists is, how do you plan to implement such an imposition upon the multinational globalist corporates that are listed elsewhere in the world other than Europe? <music> Having brokered credit and leveraged money from thin air using fractional reserve banking techniques, the international banking fraternity became greedy and stepped outside its remit. It began writing cheques against bad debts without any collateral to back them. Then, through panic at crisis point, the banks, in realising they could not summon the cash to cover their depositors, shut the sluice gates on the money supply. This crashes through the economy like a tidal wave, and the first fallers are those high-risk debtors that the banks had just been lending to. But the banks are smart and have deep-rooted influence. Ahead of the game, they had already packaged up these unworthy mortgage debts and sold them off as derivatives and credit default swaps. In essence, they had picked the pockets of their depositors by using the fractional reserve mechanism to multiply the deposit monies many-fold. The banks could not cover their position, so they used influence and power to persuade the governments that the banks were too big to fail, and subsequently then blamed the people of the nations for the debt and punished them with austerity. Desperate circumstances call for desperate measures, and so now we see the kleptocrats of the EU sanction the removal of funds directly from the people's bank deposits, freezing their accounts, locking down transfers, and forcing them to pay directly for the losses at the bank. Yet where are the bondholders? Where are the banking shareholders and investors? 
Those that took the risks to speculate in this financial derivatives Ponzi scheme. Why can the value of their investments not go down as well as up? This in-depth article takes a look at the history and, as I see it, the root cause of our current economic calamity. Today in our video library, supporting the previous story, I found this video report from Alex Jones, who in fact already predicted this would happen over three years ago. In this short video, Alex pieces together what looks to be a deeply collusive international global banking cartel operating beyond the reaches of government. Certainly, this is not a situation that is in the interest of the people and should not be allowed to continue. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Our The Word programme is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Finally, we now have a brand new live and interactive show that you can be involved with. The Unit Interactive Show begins this Friday night at 9pm, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. For those of you that follow us on Google+, you can also be part of the show using Google Hangouts. Simply join our community, The Unit, on Google+, and I will send you an invite to join the show. Links to the community page are below. Rick Timmis for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.